let Facebook catch up real quick. We should be live just a second here. All right, we're live. Welcome, Dan Henry. How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Excited to have you here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, man. I got I got my I got my coffee with my my little baby Yoda, and uh, <laughs> I'm ready to rock. Well, it's funny you say that. Isn't uh, isn't it technically not baby Yoda right now? Is that like Listen, the character is? I've not... already become accustomed <laughs> to saying baby Yoda. I don't care if he's a clone or if he's his cousin. I'm gonna say baby Yoda because it's just the thing now, and I'm I'm not willing to reprogram my mind. So. <laughs> Right on, right on. So you have a new book that you've just recently released as of, is it today? 10th. We we launched it on the 10th. On the 10th. Okay, sweet. So you launched it on the 10th and tell us a little bit about it. Yep. So it's called Digital Millionaire Secrets, How I Built an Eight-Figure Business Selling My Knowledge Online. And essentially what it is, is uh, over the past few years, I've built an eight-figure online education business. And online education, meaning we sell online courses, coaching programs, and um, masterminds, which are the, okay. the, the top three things in online education is, is coaching and consulting, courses, and masterminds. And those things obviously go hand in hand. And as well, um, info products to build software companies. And so what I did was I basically said to myself, okay, if I could go back in time Uh, And I could hand my younger self a manual and say, here's all the stuff that you should and shouldn't do so that you can do this faster. Not that, not that, you know, building an eight figure business in three years is is not fast, but Hey, you know, uh, if I, if I were to write that book and I were to hand it, or if I were to go back years ago when I was a kid or 18 years old and say, Hey, start doing this faster. And I made a manual and I handed it, this would be it. This would be the book. And so, I detailed the process and all the things I did right and wrong Mm -hmm. uh, all all the way up until even recently and put it in this book. And so if you are interested in either selling an online course, coaching program, consulting program, or you have one and you have some issues and you want to grow it, you want to fix things, this is the book for you. Love it. Love it. So we talked a little bit just before uh, we jumped on about, you know, we work with a lot of agency owners that people are working with real estate agents and they're, they're, we're starting to see a little bit of a shift, whereas they're still doing the agency thing. Right. But they're starting to build products because, you know, somebody doesn't want to spend $3,000 a month or something like that. And so they're building these, you know, done for you products, done with you products that they're starting to bring to those people and use as a, a down seller in some cases, you know, a high ticket upsell. Um, you've kind of made a transition from the, I wouldn't say low ticket, but entry level, right. To more high ticket. Is that right? Yeah. Well, we have, um, we have offers, you know, across the board for the longest time I sold a 997 course. Yep. Um, and I, that did really well. We made $8 million <laughs> with it, but, uh, I've since, expanded into different price points uh, all the way down to a, a free book, which, you know, we give this book away for free. You just pay shipping. So mm-hmm. all the way from $7 from shipping up to, uh, you know, I've had people pay me $50,000 for consulting. Um, wow. Just depends on what, uh, you know, where you're at and what you need help with. Um, but as you know, I was an ag- agency owner for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of people don't know this, but I actually had a SEO agency since I was 18 years old. Uh, really? Yes, I did. And it's funny because I had that SEO agency and the, you know, I had clients and I ended up ranking one of my own websites, which was a, uh, an electronic cigarette review website, mm-hmm. number one for electronic cigarettes, electronic cigarette, electronic cigarette review. And I was making so much money from that affiliate, and it was an affiliate site, that I actually got rid of my clients, and I just focused on that. Unfortunately, the the Google crash happened, and uh, I lost <laughs> all my rankings, and so that that didn't right. that, that that you know that went in the trash. But uh, you know, later when I created my Facebook advertising agency, um, same thing happened. You know, I had I had tons of clients. I was doing really well with it. And then I had people started saying like, Hey, you know, 
uh, how are you doing this? Um, can you, can you consult me? Can I have a one-on-one -on -one call? Can you just teach me how to do it so I can do it myself? Can you teach me how to create an agency so I can make money, uh, running ads for local businesses? And that, you know, I did. And, uh, then when I realized that I really love teaching and consulting more than I like doing done for you, and I want to reach more people and impact more people. And of course, grow my business. I shifted mm -hmm. to consulting and education, uh, solely. And, uh, you, you know, today we have a eight figure business from it. So I love it. Yeah. Cause you just won. Uh, what, what do they call that award? The, when you hit the 10 million? Oh, it's called, uh, so I don't know. They have so many different names. <laughs> I call it the eight figure award. I think they call okay. it the two C X X award. They give you this big obnoxious plaque. And then they actually, Alice, do you have the ring? Do you know where the ring is that they give you? I'd love to show that to them. So they, they give, they give you this ring, right? I don't have it on right now, but, um, it's somewhere it's huge. Yeah. It's four carats. I was, I talked to Dave Woodward who he's in charge of all that. And I said, this is like a fake ring, right? These aren't real diamonds. He's like, no, they're, they're real diamonds. It's four carats. I said, four carats. I said, how much does this cost? If you don't mind me asking, he's like, it's eight grand. And I'm like, you're giving me an $8,000 ring just because. <laughs> And he's like, well, yeah. And I was like, you guys are nuts. Like, <laughs> you guys clearly are, are drinking the, 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 the magical Kool-Aid. You guys that are crazy. Is, <laughs> that's, a, that's quite the, uh, the gift. It's quite the experience that you get when you hit that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, I, I'm sure, though, like, if, if you really look at it from the time you started you know, your first course, and it, just the amount of money you've probably made click funnels is probably insane, right? Because I like I, I remember when I first joined your first course, the first thing I bought was click funnels through your affiliate, right? And I'm sure I wasn't the only one out of the four or five thousand students that, that have. So right. um, you know, I'm pretty sure they're happy to give you that ring. <laughs> well, I mean, I you know, I don't promote them because I want to make money. I promote them because they're one of the tools that I use a lot. And I'm I'm going to tell my clients and students to use the same tools. You know, like we use them for uh, order pages and funnels and landing pages and all that. Um, we use Help Scout for customer service. Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to recommend you the best tool uh, for the job. It just so happens they have a really great uh, system for uh, promoting them. And, um, you know, I'll take the ring. So <laughs> <laughs> not going to wear it everywhere because it's stupid heavy, but you'll, you'll take it. Right. <laughs> I wear it to like events and stuff. Um, right. But yeah, it's, it, it, it sucks because it's so big that you, you run it into doors a lot. And I, so I, I stopped wearing it a lot. Cause I was like, this thing's going to be trashed in like a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I had a couple of questions. Um, you know, especially with this book launch coming out. So what shift in your mindset has made the biggest impact on your business, you know, since you started? You know, I'd love to tell you, but every time I answer this question, somebody always goes, oh yeah, of course, that, of course he would say that, you know? So I'm always cautious to answer this question because it's the truth, but nobody ever likes this answer. You sure you want me to give it to you? I, I'm sure. I like, I mean, sometimes the, the answers don't have to be sexy to be right. Yeah, uh, you, you just pay people. Like, think about this for a second. This is the only industry, mm -hmm. right? It's the only path in life where pay to play is okay. Like, think about it. If you have a problem and you just pay the best in the world to help you fix it, then you're that that's that's the cheat code you know tony robbins said find somebody that is uh, successful at what you want to do model them and you'll be successful too well dan henry says if you want to be successful find somebody that's doing what you want to do and pay them whatever they want to show you how to do it and you'll be a lot more successful a lot faster um i remember i was uh i don't do you guys do jujitsu at all uh i've done a little bit I've done a little bit. I haven't been in a while. <laughs> All right. So it's a funny story. Uh, there's this guy named Gordon Ryan, and uh, he is a you know big jujitsu guy. He he wins all the tournaments, and uh, I I he came out of nowhere. Like he he nobody really knew who he was, and then all of a sudden he wins everything. And I ran into him at a tournament tournament one time, and I was I you know he probably it was like a little like a ten second uh, interaction. Probably doesn't even remember me, but. Uh, it was an important 10 seconds because I said, Hey man, I said, can I ask you like, what's your secret? You know? Mm -hmm. And he goes, my secret is there's no secret. He says, I found the best jujitsu trainer in the world. 
moved to California where he was located, paid him whatever he wanted, and that's it. And his coach is John Danaher from the Danaher Desk Squad. Uh, everybody on his team that he coaches wins, period. Why? Because he's the best. So <laughs> if, that's it. So if, you know, if you like, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a, a story of how I implemented this. Uh, okay. Early, early on when we started selling high ticket, we had an issue where, um, where, we weren't having people show up to the calls. It was like, we had like a 50% show up, rate. It was terrible. So I call up um, one of my friends, Molly, who sells a high ticket offer for photographers. And I remember her saying that her show rate was really high. I said, Hey Molly, what, you know, what, what, uh, what are you doing? And she gives me this tip. Um, and it's a really good tip. And I say, well, listen, I say, could I pay you to hop on the phone with my sales reps and also review some of their calls, um, and and kind of just give give your opinion and and you know and and help them implement this this thing. And she says, "Well, I'm really busy." Da 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 da. And I said, "Well, I'll pay you a thousand dollars an hour." <laughs> and she goes, "What?" And I go, "I will pay you a thousand dollars an hour." And she goes, "Well, okay." So then. I go and I find a top sales rep from uh, a colleague of mine and I give the same offer. I say, hey, can you review some of my sales reps calls and give your opinion? I'll pay you $1,000 an hour. And she's like, uh, yeah. So I end up spending about, I don't remember exactly. It was either eight or 10 grand. Let's just say 10, okay? okay. Yep. Now you might say, Dan, you're crazy. You spent 10 grand just to have people, uh, you know, review some calls. You spent, you paid them a thousand dollars an hour. That's a terrible business idea. Well, I can attribute, I can attribute, one hundred percent, at a minimum, at least an extra two million dollars in revenue from the value I got from the from paying them and from getting them to review our calls. Minimum. Wow. So. <laughs> You could look at it two ways. You could say Dan spent ten grand on a on a on a bunch of calls, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, God, I have I I I hope I have those numbers right because it's in my book. I'm pretty sure it was either eight or ten hours I bought, <laughs> but it was a lot of money. And right. and, and you 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 could say uh, he you know he he overspent, or you could say he turned uh, you know ten grand into two million. And yeah. your answer to that question will really be telling on whether or not you're going to be successful. So when you say that say, your answer to the question will be telling on if you're going to be successful, tell us more about that. Well, if you're the type of person that views that as crazy outrageous as views it as an expense, then likely you're going to, I'm sorry, but you're going to fail because that's how you're going to view everything. You know, you're going to view, you know, poor people view uh, things as, as expenses and rich people view things as investments. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yes. if, if you have the, the, the attitude and the mindset that I overspent, well, you're never, that's going to, that's going to trickle down into your business and your decision-making. But if you look at it like, wow, Dan turned eight or 10 grand into 2 million. That is how a millionaire thinks. That is how a successful person thinks. Right. Uh, it, maybe it's a little outside of the box, but that is, is, you know, you ask the mindset shift, that's it. Don't be afraid to spend money when it makes sense. Don't spend it if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, I'm not saying just go, you know, making it rain everywhere, but right. if it makes sense, do it. You know, it's, it's very simple. It's sort of like, um, I remember uh, I, my, uh, a friend of my mother's, uh, he was telling me a story about how he made like 800 grand in a weekend because he bought these, um, uh, what do they call those things? You, you know, the, the things that go in the back of semi trucks, uh, car, uh, uh, the on big the rectangle things that have all the supplies. Um, on the back of like inventory lists? No, no, no. Like, you, you know, you put this big thing on a semi tractor trailer and you drive it across the country. Oh, the cargo containers. Yeah, the car, that's it. Jeez. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like the trailer. <laughs> that, that like is the semi. I'm thinking wow. like the sticker yeah, on the back. Sorry. Uh, anyway, so, you know, <laughs> the containers, he bought like, he spent like 200 grand, like his last penny 
on like four or five of the of these things because you know they had these auctions and stuff. Anyway, you he didn't even know what was in them, and you could think he was an idiot for you know, doing that, but he knew that what was in them was worth far more than what he had. And so he, he bought them and he took them to this, this big festival and Mm -hmm. he bought all these tents and he sold everything and he made 800 grand in like less than a week. So he he spent 200 (laughs) grand on random crap or did he make, did he turn 200 grand into 800? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, but for somebody who's in the uh, early stages, right? Maybe they're earlier on. How do they implement that? Because I mean, looking back and saying, you know, if I could turn 10,000 into 2 million, it's a no brainer, right? How does somebody look at their business today and see those opportunities? Well, so let me ask you a question. Yep. If you spent, would, would you spend all your money on um, uh, a plane, but get no flying lessons? Nope. Right, because you'll crash. Wouldn't it be a better decision to maybe rent a plane or buy, uh, you know, I don't know if they have timeshares for planes or, or, or at the very minimum, get the flying lessons first, spend money on that, and then when you buy your plane, you actually know how to fly it. So let me give you an example. People will spend tons of money on, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. They'll spend a ton of money on dinners, on, on movies, on, uh, you know, uh, just all kinds of random crap that they don't really need at that moment. Right. You know, they'll spend it on iPads and they'll spend it on, they'll spend a thousand dollars on a logo, right? right? They'll just, they'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll just do all this crazy stuff that costs money, but they won't just pay a flipping millionaire that knows what they're doing to just show them how. That's the thing. You know? So that is the first thing, is, is finding someone who can teach you what to do and make those decisions along the way. Again, would you, would you <laughs> even step in the plane without getting flying lessons? Yep. The first step, if, if you have an idea to have your, your own, own plane, not, not a jet that you'd have a pilot for, but your own plane, what is the first step that everyone takes? Learn how to fly. You learn how to fly. <laughs> Why? Because you will crash. There is no difference in business. The first step is, is to learn how to fly. It's to read books. It's to pay for, you know, obviously do your due diligence, but it's to pay for coaching and consulting. It, it's to, you know, find people who are doing what you want to do. Uh, like For instance, uh, you know, did I already mention the Tony Robbins quote? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, I did. But that, that's, that, that, that's true is, is, the fastest way to success is to pay someone to show you how to do it, period. And, you know, if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. But if you can find the money, it's funny because people say they don't have the money, but then Black Friday happens and all of a sudden they have the money. <laughs> yep. But they don't have the money when they need to do something important like grow a business. Think, mm-hmm. See, so you're asking me the mindset. That's the mindset. Um, I remember, I'll give you, I'll give you a, an interesting take on this. I don't really do a lot of speaking. Okay. I have somewhat recently, but I didn't, that's, I didn't make any money speaking. That wasn't my thing. So uh, I get asked by Russell Brunson to speak at FHL and I'm like, okay, well, this is, this is great. I, you know, I'm going to get on stage in front of 5,000 people. Everybody's going to remember this, blah, 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 blah. So I, ha- I, I, I asked Myron Golden, are you familiar with Myron Golden? Yep. I asked Myron Golden to have dinner at my house, right, right there. And we have dinner and he says, uh, you know, I'm talking to him about it and, you know, and I said, Hey man, don't you have like some training on speaking and all this stuff and how to speak from stage properly and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, you know, I got this event. It's like two grand. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, don't you have like something, you you have like a, a mastermind, right? He's like, yeah, it's 30 grand. And I said, okay. I said, let me ask you, if, if I was in that mastermind, do you think that I could do a much better job on stage at FHL uh, and I could really position myself in a good place uh, versus not having it and just getting up there and winging it? He's like, well, yeah, absolutely. And I said, okay, here's a check for 30 grand. Handed <laughs> it to him. Now, he worked with me 
And I'm not saying I'm a terrible speaker, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, Myron is like a master, you know? Right. Um, so I, I did that and I got on stage and when I got off stage, people were rushing up to my staff, handing them credit cards. They're like, I don't know what Dan sells, but here, buy it. <laughs> we had two people join my mastermind. That's $60,000 immediately. Plus we had a ton of people buy our stuff that saw me on stage. The return on investment on that is insane. Now I understand that you might say, well, Dan, I don't have 30 grand. Well, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is, you know, prioritize and execute. I learned that from the book, uh, Extreme Ownership. Uh, so if your goal right now is to sell uh, your educational program, then find somebody that's good at that and pay them. If your goal right now is to grow your agency, find somebody that's good at that and pay them. If your goal is to speak on stage, find somebody that's good at that and pay them. That should be your first step, not building out logos and all this crazy stuff that doesn't, doesn't matter at all. It, it, right. know, it just doesn't matter. Unless you're Coca-Cola, nobody cares about your logo. <laughs> they don't. Only you care. Nobody does. It's Nobody true. Gives crap. <laughs> it's true. It's totally true. And so I guess um, based on your success and knowledge today, what do you wish that you'd started doing sooner in your business? Oh, definitely. Selling high ticket. Okay. That is, that is the biggest thing. Charging more. And here's okay. why. Um, and I talk about this. I talk about this in the book. We, we had a million dollars in a month. Um, the February before last okay. and we had, it was mainly our 997 program. Mm -hmm. So as great as that sounds, we had so many support tickets. We had refund requests. We had, uh, you know, disputes because at that volume, you're going to have those things. When I started my first six months in business, I made a million bucks, a little over a million. I didn't have a single refund. I didn't have a single charge back. It's because everybody that had an issue could just message me and I could mm -hmm. just talk to them and it was the problem was solved. But when you're making a million dollars a month and you have 15,000 customers, there's no way you can talk to everybody. You have to have your staff do that. And, you know, that causes people to be a little bit more, you know, like let's say you don't get your username and password, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, people will ask for refunds over simple stuff like that. They'll get scared. They'll get, you know, <laughs> it's a know. scam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know what, that that's okay. It, it's, it's part of doing business as right. well. You get things like piracy. Mm -hmm. uh, you get more customer service requests. You just get a lot of stuff that happens because you're doing volume. Well, when we raised our prices with our, our new program, we, we implemented that and went hard on that the very next month. And the very next month, we only did 600 grand, but we made more profit than we did with the 997. And here's what happened. We had virtually no piracy, no refund requests, no chargeback. Because when you sell high ticket, you sell over the phone and you're able to have like a 45 minute to an hour conversation with somebody. They're fully aware of you. They're fully comfortable. They know who you are. They're, they're not going to be like, oh, what's this charge on my credit card? They sign an agreement. Um, and, you know, you have, you have way less customers. Mm -hmm. So you can have more of a personal connection with those customers. I talk to everybody in that program every week on a coaching yeah. call. I can't talk to my 997 people. There's too many of them, you right. know? And so what ended up happening was we were able to give much better value to our clients get them much better results far in exceedance of, of, of what they pay. And on top of it, we had, we like eliminated major departments. We consolidated major departments at my company down to one. Now you might say, well, Dan, I don't want to sell over the phone. Well, would you trade five things? You look, nobody wants to sell over the phone. Nobody wants to deal with refunds. Nobody wants to deal with chargebacks. Nobody wants to deal with customer support. Nobody wants to deal with piracy. I get that. <laughs> But would you trade five things you don't want to do for one thing you don't want to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So Absolutely. that would be the biggest change I would make. And what's really cool is we teach our students now, now that we've made millions of dollars with high ticket, we've been doing it for a while. We now teach our students our high ticket sales process. So what's really awesome is even though we're charging more, they only need one or two sales to pay for the entire program. So it's like they come in, they learn, they immediately go close to sales, they're whole. Yeah. With, you know, with the 997, it actually takes longer to get your money back. So everything's just better when you sell high ticket and you provide a better service. Makes sense.
And so, uh, sorry, sorry, it's just on a related note, um, for people that have 997 courses, like, can you, can you go from a, you know, a low ticket course up to a high ticket course without changing much within your course, just switching over the sales process? Um, so great question. Uh, I have a client, Andy, uh, he had a $2,000 program and mm -hmm. he was selling it over an order page, you know, classic webinar to order page. And what the problem was, it was the same problem I had. He, he was, he had support issues. He had this, that, and he would spend 60 grand in ads to make 70 grand in sales. And so I, I looked at his program and I said, Hey man, I said, you really need to sell this high ticket. And he says, okay, well, how do I do that? I said, well, I want you to send an email to everybody that is on your, you know, that registered for your webinar, but didn't buy and say, Hey, I, I realize you, you may not have bought because you still have questions. I'd be happy to jump on the phone with you and answer any questions, book some calls, sell it for five grand. I'll get to what we added in a moment, but he gets on the phone, sells his very first, uh, very first one. Boom, 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 boom. Actually, let me retract that. He gets on the phone, sells a few for two grand, same price he was charged. <laughs> After you told him to go for five? I'm sorry? After you told him to go for five? Well, I did. And, and he, he went and did two <laughs> for the first few anyway. And he closed them. And then he gets right. on a call and he says, Dan, I've been closing at two grand a piece. I said, of course you have. Like, it's only two grand. And <laughs> he says, when should I raise it to five? And I say, when's your next call? He says, it's in 10 minutes. I said, okay, do it on that call. And he says, well, what do I do when I get to the part about the price? I said, Okay, so when you get there and they ask how much it is, here's what I want you to do. This is highly technical. Instead of saying 2,000, say 5,000. That's it. <laughs> and he goes, that's it? So he goes, he does it, closes the sale. And from then on, he's, he's, now he's up to about $140,000 a month uh, in high ticket sales with that same exact offer. Now, what do you, like, how do you, take a 997 program or a $2,000 program like he did and transition it. Well, the main thing is more attention to your students. Not much has to change about the actual program. It's mm -hmm. more your support with the program. So what we do is, for instance, in my 997 program that I had, it was the course. It was some downloadable templates and funnels, and that was it, and a Facebook group. In our new program, um, we have – several courses you get. We have complete full systems you download. They're plug and play. They save you tens of thousands of dollars because nobody has to build them for you. So right. we took the time once to make those and now we can give them to everybody. Uh, we have two, not one, but two weekly coaching calls, one with me and one with one of my coaches, um, our, a Facebook group. And we just implemented um, giving everybody that joins the program four tickets to our live event. Uh, and on top of that, they can use our same high ticket sales script to sell a few of those tickets and make almost their entire investment back and get practice with the high ticket script so that when they go to sell their offer, they crush. And when they practice it with our live event, we're fulfilling, we have an existing brand, all they, all they have to focus on is the actual sales process mm -hmm. and they get their feet wet. And then when they go to sell their stuff, boom, uh, it's good to go. So the biggest shift was then they're going to provide a different level of support, a more. Right. I can't like, for instance, let's say you, you're doing something with the program in a 997 program. Um, and you're not sure if you're doing it right or you implement and it's just not that good there for 997. It's very difficult to have somebody to look at it and go, well, that's not very good. Do this instead. Right. But if you charge, you know, five or 10 or, or even more, uh, then like, for instance, I'll give you an example. Somebody calls, comes on a call, uh, and says, uh, Hey Dan, I just implemented this. Um, here's my copy for this ad, or here's my, you know, idea for my, what I'm going to share on my webinar. I look at it and I go, that's all right, but it's not great. Instead, you could say this, and this would make a lot more sense. And then they go, Oh, and then they do it. And then it works better. Or, they say, Dan, you know, my webinar is not converting. All my numbers are good. My lead cost is good. My webinar is not great. So I ask them some questions about the webinar. And I say, are you doing this? Are you doing that? What do you say when this happens? And, and I go, oh, that's it. There it is. That's where you made your mistake. They go and change it. All of a sudden, the webinar converts. And it's not <laughs> me giving my opinion. It's that I've sold over $12 million worth of this stuff. I just already know the answers. 
Like mm-hmm. it's like you're sitting next to somebody taking a test and they've taken that test 12 million times and they're just leaning over going, nope, that one, that one. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the experience of, of I've, I've, seen, I've seen it all, right? I've seen every industry you could think of. I've, I've helped hundreds of people with this and I've just seen what transpires. So I just, I know, you know, what is happening when there's an issue and where to look. If you don't know where to look, you can't solve the problem. We know where to look and we know how to solve the problem. And so when you charge a higher ticket price, you have the time to sit there and look at your actual student stuff uh, and, you know, train, and you can afford to have a coach come on and look at their stuff. You can just afford to do more. And it's still a higher profit margin, still a higher profit margin. Really? So you're seeing higher profit margins on the higher tickets, even with added cost and in, in support and things like that. Yes. Because again, again, imagine if you had to hire one extra coach mm-hmm. to help, but you didn't need four people to run other departments of your business. You didn't need right. four support, support reps. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so, so yes, we tripled. So believe it or not, we, even with the rising ad costs and blah, 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 and this whole narrative that everything's getting harder. Uh, <laughs> I, I sat down and had a meeting with, with our CPA. We tripled profits last year. Wow. In 2019, we tripled profits. And so do you feel like everyone needs to move? Everyone who's doing digital products should be moving towards high ticket? Not everyone. Um, okay. And if you sell a, a course on how to bake cookies, no, probably not. <laughs> now, if you sell a course on how to start your own bakery, yes. Okay. okay. Um, so, you know, there are tons of people out there. There's like, I know a guy that made a million dollars from selling a program on, on how to use Excel. I don't know him personally, but I, I read about him. Uh, there's guys out there. These are two guys named the jump rope dudes or the jump rope guys. They've made millions selling how to jump rope. Really? Okay. Yeah. They use it for weight loss. It's like okay. a jump rope. Yeah. So not everything should be high ticket, but everything has the potential to be high ticket. Again, let's say you sell a, a course on how to bake cookies, right? Okay. And the reason you know that is because you have a catering company on cookies. Yeah, sure. You could sell a $40 course on how to become a masterful cookie baker, but you could also sell a program on how to start your own uh, bakery catering company. And that you could definitely charge high ticket for. Makes sense. Makes sense. Shane, you're being awful quiet, man. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just listening. Right? <laughs> it's all good. It's all good information. Yeah, no. So... And I know, I know, you know, we, we've got some specific questions we want to ask Dan. So I'm just, uh, I, I've got all kinds of questions, but they're all <laughs> like, it's all, it's all for my own stuff. <laughs> so. That's okay. It's self-serving questions. Let's do <laughs> That's it. right. You guys are in SO, uh, SOC, in a SOC right? Yep. Both, cor- both courses. Actually, Matt and I met um, inside of your uh, Get Clients program. And then... Uh, well, it was Facebook uh, ads for entrepreneurs back then. Yeah, yeah that was then. that's yeah. OG. That was before Facebook <laughs> sent me a cease and desist <laughs> to not use their name. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, at then, least they didn't shut then... your ad account down. <laughs> oh, that's, that's like changing. These days, getting your ad account shut down is just a normal part of business. This is like changing your underwear. So. Right. Well, you know, I, I, Dan, I think you can actually thank... Um, Facebook for you know starting to do that to people because I that that was part of the reason why we joined SOC <laughs> trying to figure out how to run you know ads that aren't gonna you know shut down your uh, your accounts so yeah yeah absolutely well that's I mean we we've limited we get shut down maybe once a year now which is like basically nothing because I see people that just they they run ads for a week and they can't they can't keep it up um, mm-hmm. no pun intended uh, but it, it's uh, it, you know it's I was gonna let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sorry, um, but it, 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 it's like we've also gotten those accounts back. But to get your account flagged is going to happen eventually. Mm-hmm. It's just how do you react to it? How do you deal with it? How do you move forward? Um, it, it's it's not the end of the world. I mean, if it was, I wouldn't be sitting here, you know. Right. So, um, but but yeah, that's right. You guys are in sold out courses. That's awesome. That's awesome. Did, yeah, yeah. Uh, was it you or Matt, Shane, was it, was it you guys that did the beta webinar and you made like 10 grand or something? Oh, that was uh, one of my beta webinars. I did, uh, I think it was 12 is what we ended up doing. 12,000. Uh, so you webinar. did a beta webinar and did, yep. did you do it like I teach in the program where you, you, you sell it before you create it and then you use that beta process to refine it? Yep. 
12 grand without even creating a program. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that you more, got, way I, more than pays for the program just right absolutely, there. Absolutely, for right? sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing I have to say too about um, uh, SOC, and, and I, I, I commented this many times in the ClickFunnels group and whenever somebody you know mentions the course that like I personally feel uh, SOC is probably one of the best um, in terms of content and the way you've put it together. Uh, it, it's, I, you know, when I started watching the first videos, I started noticing like, oh my God, I want to watch the next one. I was so addicted to actually watching your content <laughs> and wanting, but I remember you talking about this a long time ago that you have to make sure that you, people can absorb the content and actually want to absorb the content or else yeah. they're not going to be successful, right? Because they're just not going to go through the course. But I, I remember that. And I was just like, I, it, it dawned on me or hit me like, wow, the, the course is actually really well put together. And I started thinking like, even if you don't want to like, um, even if you don't want to actually build a course, but you want to learn, like you, you want to learn how to put together content, your course alone just teaches that. Just watch the videos. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Well, we try to cover every aspect of the course business. So that's why it's a complete program all the way up to customer service. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's the thing is if you want results from your students to help sell your program. And the only way to get those results is to make your program uh, executable. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a method to that madness. So, um, and again, trust me, I've had early on, I've had courses that were good, but I'm sure you guys, you guys buy all my stuff. So uh, you can tell that as time progresses, they get better, they get easier to understand, they get refined and that's just what happens. And so it took me years to figure that out. I try to teach my clients how to do that without taking years to figure it out. You could just, yeah. you could just, uh, uh, you use my experience and, um, and, and get right to work, hit the ground running. Yeah. Cause I, I remember telling Matt that like after watching, you know, probably 80% of sold out courses, I, I went back to Matt and I said, listen, we've got to redo the entire course. <laughs> <laughs> and that did was after. Matt, like, did you watch, uh, I don't know when this was cause we, we always update the programs. Did you mm -hmm. watch version one or version two? Version, uh, version two. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Version two is like, it's like my yeah. Picasso. It's, it's, like, yeah. it's, it's my it's my Mona Lisa. Is that right? <laughs> until I until I create another Mona Lisa. There you go. Yeah. No, we had people asking. Uh, SOC is sold out courses. Everybody, it's a, a program that Dan has here that is pretty freaking sweet. Um, which it is still available. You're still selling that. Yes. Okay. Cool. And I think we got lucky and we got in before the price went up again. <laughs> so yeah you know it's funny i i love how the, oh this fake scarcity you know no it's not um we had somebody who we we, we closed it off at midnight mm -hmm. and um we had a guy who couldn't make up his mind uh messages us at 1202 all right i'm i'm in it's 1202 and he's like oh i can't get the old price and we're like no like <laughs> we do, we promise what we say it's 1202 and you know what he did paid full price. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he still got his money's worth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, plus we've added the live event. We've added some more cool stuff yeah. to it. So we did increase the value when we increased the price. Absolutely. Okay, we're actually cool. thinking about adding a third call. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to, we're thinking about having my, lead tech guy mm -hmm. who he did all the tech documentation. Uh, he used to work for Steve jobs. He did a ton of tech documentation, tech documentation for their team. <laughs> um, he does all of our tech stuff. And I was thinking about adding a third call um, either once a week or every other week uh, for a tech uh, tech call uh, where if people are having any, any like specific tech issues, they can jump on the call uh, and get with him. So we're Makes probably going to add that pretty soon. That's yeah. cool. That's sweet. Well, if they're, if they're having tech issues, they're probably not using the exact systems that you provide because those are pretty uh, foolproof. Well, that's like. what happens is we give you the full system that you can just download and plug and play. And when people start to mess with those systems, they get confused. Uh, if you use it as intended, which I don't know why you wouldn't, I mean, it's the exact systems I use, then mm -hmm. everything will be fine, but people play around with it. Or, or maybe they just have a question. They don't understand one particular thing and uh that's why we're going to add that call i'm always looking to make the program better whatever i need to do to get better results for uh my clients i, I always look at that first because that that'll increase sales more than anything is getting your clients better results yeah absolutely i, I mean that. how many times have you 
somebody sells a course, they make a bunch of money uh, initially, and then it dies off. And then, you know, you see the comments in groups where people are like, oh, his stuff wasn't that good, blah, 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 blah. But then you see my stuff, it continually mm-hmm. sells, continually goes up. And when people comment with my stuff, they're always saying how great it is because I take the time to make it great. I don't just throw it together and be like, all right, I'm making money now. I, I really concentrate on making that thing as awesome as it possibly can be and getting the results. Makes sense. Makes sense. So what in your new book would you say was your favorite part about putting together? Let me see. Uh, I would say my favorite part about putting it together. Like when you're putting it together, what was your favorite part? You're like, this is my favorite part of the book. I hope people really pay attention to this. I hope they get, you know, understand this one. Thing. That's a great question. I would say it is the chapter called, or the section called developing mind control powers. Let me just read this to you real quick. <laughs> Cause it's like super short, this little intro. All right. Developing mind control powers. All right. So. And we've got quite a few people said they've already ordered it or they already have it. So awesome. awesome. If they don't have it, where can they get it by the way, while you're looking this up? Oh, you can go to digital millionaire secrets.com mm-hmm. and you can get a free copy. You do have to pay the postman as long as you pay uh, shipping, I will cover the cost of the actual book, send it out to you. You just pay the postman. Um, all right, so this is called The Real Secret of Scale. I'll just read this to you really, really quick. It's only a page and a half. Uh, this chapter will be the shortest in the book. As we come to the end of this section on scaling your offer, I'd like to let you know that the next section of this book will help you scale your offer far more than the current one. Many things help in scaling your education business. Sure, there are advertising tricks, software systems, etc., but those things like the wind change. What doesn't change is your ability to focus, be productive, make good decisions, and above all, maintain a million-dollar mindset. As we all know, superheroes do not exist. There are no mutants with mind control powers. Or are there? Most people fail because they let their mind run away with itself. They get distracted, move from shiny object to shiny object, or make poor decisions. The real villain in any entrepreneur's story is their mind. Your ability to control your mind is the number one thing that will allow you to scale. Some think that mind control powers mean you have the ability to control other people's minds, but I believe it's hard enough to control your own mind. If you control your own mind, I would consider that a superpower. The next section of this book will teach you the closest thing to mind control powers that can exist in reality. That's probably my, what comes next is probably my favorite part of the book because it's really, truly, deeply uh, the things that have helped me the most. Really? So you would say the things that have helped you the most were the mindset? Absolutely. And that doesn't sound sexy. No. But it is, <laughs> right? It, it's, it's sort of like saying, well, the reason I have uh, good, clean tasting water in my house is because I have a water softener. I have filters on, my, on, my, uh, uh, on all my sinks. And you know, I put Himalayan salt in my water and all this stuff. But here's the thing is if the water company turns off your water, what happens? None of that stuff matters, right? right? And your mind is the water company. It is the source. So if that thing is plugged up and and not flowing, then the ads, the funnels, the copy, the offers, all of that will get restricted and it won't matter because there'll be nothing feeding those things, making them work, okay? So that, and, 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 oh yeah, yeah, Dan, mindset, no. Sorry, but I have sat in, I'll give you an example. At FHL, they had a private dinner for everybody that has an eight-figure award. Everybody in that room that we were sitting down with had, had made over $10 million. Do you know that not a single conversation in that room was about funnels, ads, nothing? You know what we were talking about? We were talking about focus, diet, productivity, mindset. I sat and talked with Peng Jun, who wears the same exact clothes every day. And you know why he wears the same exact clothes every day? So he doesn't have to make decisions. So he doesn't have to waste precious time every morning making a decision about what to wear. He gets up, he grabs the same clothes, puts them on. That's literally 30 seconds. He's out the door. He's not worrying about what to, and now he gets more time. That 
is the type of things that millionaires think about, not funnels and ads. And you need all those things. You need to be good at all those things. 100%. Absolutely. But if you don't have the core mindset to make those things worth, they aren't worth jack to you. So Love that it. part of the book, uh, whether you accept it or not, will be the thing that helps you the most. Love hey, it. Matt, remember, remember when I called you that one time and I said, you've got to go check out this video inside of Sold Out Courses? Yep. Remember what video that was? <laughs> mindset. Yeah. <laughs> that was like one of the best videos of that course is yeah. uh, the mindset video for sure. And you know, it's funny because when you pay a little bit more, you pay a little bit more attention because <laughs> yes. I think the mindset is like the, the thing that a lot of times, you know, Black Friday, you see everybody's courses are half off or, you know they're down to 25% or whatever. So you grab a couple of them because you're interested in one or two techniques. And, and then you never open them up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might open up for one technique, but you obviously skip the mindset, right? And this was like the first course that I think I've actually gone through the mindset section, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the thing I do with my mindset training is I, I'll do a different mindset training for each program. Mm -hmm. And I apply that. My, it's the same core stuff, but it applies to that program. You know what I mean? Like I talk about it in context with what you're doing. So uh, I believe that mindset is huge, but it's not just about creating a great mindset. It's about creating a great mindset that is in, is in context with your goal. So what would that look like? Well, I'll give you an example, right? Mm -hmm. Um let me think of a, of a good example. Um, I know you've so, got time constraints. How much time we have? I got another five minutes. Perfect. Yeah. I'll give you a perfect example, right? Um, we had somebody join my mastermind okay. who it, that is, uh, I, he's an old, older, older dog, I, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, and he likes going to mastermind events and networking and stuff. And, uh, you know, I actually had to part ways with him because uh, he, when he joined, uh, you know, our main form of communication in our mastermind is through Facebook, through a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, well, he decided that <laughs> he doesn't like Facebook. And, you know, the whole time he was complaining about the fact that he had to use a Facebook account to communicate with us, which internet marketing, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> um, and so, at one point, he was becoming a little bit um, rowdy. <laughs> rowdy, yeah. And he says in the group, you know, I don't like the fact that I have to have a Facebook account and blah, blah, blah. And I said, listen, I said, you told me that your biggest reason for being in this mastermind is to be able to network with the other members. And in order to do that, you need to have a Facebook account. So why don't you just use Facebook? <laughs> well, he didn't like that answer. And so we, I, you know, said, all right, this is not a good fit. You can go. Um, but that's the thing is there are so many things that we do or don't do small, teeny tiny things that stand in the way of our goals that mean nothing, you know, like it, just do it, just do it anyway, you know, period. And I'll give you another example. Um, sales calls, right? I've had a ton of students that says, well, I don't want to get on a phone and sell over the phone. I'm uncomfortable. So what? <laughs> Just do it anyway. Like, let me ask you this. Are you comfortable with making, having to get on the phone 10 times, make 10 phone calls over the next week and land $20,000 in business? Does that sound good to you? Well, yeah. Okay, so all you have to do is get comfortable and get good at selling on the phone, which will help you. And mm. you can make like, would, it, would an extra 20 grand a week mean a lot to you? Yes. Would it change your family? Yes. Would it change your life at home? Yes. Would it help you out? How important is, is it to you to get the things that that 20 grand will bring? Well, it's very important. Well, if it's that important to you, then you'll just flip and get on the phone. Okay, <laughs> period. And if not, then somebody else will, mm -hmm. and they will take the money that you would have made. So, you know, when it comes to like mindset and stuff, you have to realize that the people that do things that they don't necessarily want to do and they get through it win. Because here's the thing. I owned a bar in Spring Hill, Florida uh, years ago, 
And I was actually able to flip that bar for a multi six figure profit. I bought the bar, I remodeled it, I ran Facebook ads to it, I made it the hottest spot in town after it was closed down, and we sold it for a multiple six figure profit. And it was the hottest bar in town. It's called Aqua Bar and Lounge in Spring Hill, Florida. You can look it up. <laughs> you know, the people I sold it to trashed it, but that's neither here nor there. And what, what, what every family member, every person that I knew told me, they said, Dan, this is a bad idea. Nine, 99% of bars fail their first year in the state of Florida. Why would you do this? And I said, that's exactly why I'm doing it. Because what I just heard, you, you, you hear that statistic and you hear, don't do it. Mm-hmm. I hear that statistic and this is what I hear. I hear that 99% of my competition isn't very good at all. And that's just going to make it easier on me. <laughs> so that's the thing is when you do things that you don't want to do, when you embrace the hard, you are immediately going to step in front of your competitors because your competitors are not willing to do those things. The more you are willing to do that most people aren't, the easier it will be to succeed because your competitors just aren't willing to do it. So suck it up, get over it, and do it anyway. And it. eventually, when you see how well it works, you'll embrace it, and you might even start to love it. I love it. Dan, thank you so much for being here. You guys go check out Digital Millionaire Secrets. I've got the link posted in the comments below. Any parting words, Dan? Um, I would just say, you know, guys, th- this is a, this is a, I'm not going to be that guru that tells you, hey, it's easy, right? It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Mm-hmm. It's actually kind of hard. It's not the hardest thing. I think working a nine to five for 50 years waiting for a pension is much harder, but it's still hard. But that is why you have leaders in the industry that are willing to help you. Okay. That's why I wrote this book to help you. If you didn't need help, if it wasn't hard, there'd be no reason for me to write this book, but it is. And that's why I wrote this book. And that's why you need this book because with this book, it will take something that is hard and make it far easier if you implement But there's no better time than to have your own online business right now, obviously, okay? Now is the best time. So I would get the book, read the book, and implement. And if you need more help, we're here for that as well. Love it. Thank you, Dan. Thanks Thanks so much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. All right, awesome. Okay. Take care. Have a good one.